This is the Music History Today podcast for September 18th. On today's show, Scott Joplin gets paid, a grunge-themed movie premieres, a TV show about a radio station premieres, and the world loses Jimi Hendrix. First up, though, on this date in 1899, Scott Joplin was granted the royalty copyright for his song Maple Leaf Rag. In 1947, a country music concert was held at Carnegie Hall in New York City for the first time. Roy Acuff and Ernest Tubb were the performers that night. In 1955, entertainer Debbie Reynolds married singer Eddie Fisher. In 1957, the TV music show The Big Record premiered on CBS television. In 1960, singer Tab Hunter's TV show The Tab Hunter Show premiered on NBC television. In 1962, Dee Dee Sharp recorded the song Ride. In 1967, the Beatles filmed the striptease scene for their movie The Magical Mystery Tour. In 1968, the Beatles started recording the song Birthday. Also on that same day, Barbara Streisand's film Funny Girl premiered in movie theaters. In 1969, singer Tiny Tim announced his engagement to Miss Vicki Budinger. They eventually got married on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. In 1971, Bobby Sherman's TV sitcom Getting Together premiered on ABC. In 1978, the TV show about a radio station, WKRP in Cincinnati, debuted. In 1983, Kiss went without their makeup for the first time in public when they did an interview on MTV. In 1985, Gladys Knight's TV sitcom Charlie and Company premiered on CBS. In 1992, Cameron Crowe's grunge-themed musical movie Singles was released. In 1994, the Farm Aid 7 concert took place. In 2004, the Farm Aid 17 concert was held. And also on that same day, Britney Spears married dancer Kevin Federline. In 2005, the Farm Aid 18 concert was held. In 2006, Cantopop singer Cecilia Chung married actor Nicholas Z. In 2009, the group Clean Bandit was formed, and on that same day, Lucinda Williams married her manager, Tom Oberby, during her concert. And in 2010, Eddie Vedder of Pearl Jam married model Jill McCormick. In classical music, in 1769, the first spinet piano was built, and in 1809, the Royal Opera House in London opened. In theater, in 1897, the musical Belle of New York City opened on Broadway, and in 1985, the musical Song and Dance opened on Broadway. In award ceremonies that were held on September 18th, in 1994, the United States Postal Service put Billie Holiday on a stamp. In 2008, the Village People received their star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And in 2017, entertainer Donald Glover, a.k.a. Childish Gambino, won a Primetime Emmy Award. Albums that were released in the UK on August 10th include in 1970 when Black Sabbath released Paranoid, and in 2000, Bjork released the soundtrack to Selma Song's music from the motion picture soundtrack Dancer in the Dark. Meanwhile in America, in 1970, Fleetwood Mac released Kill in the House. In 1972, Elephant's Memory released their self-titled album. In 1978, Eight, all four members of the band Kiss at that time released their self-titled solo albums on the exact same day. So you had Ace Frehley with his self-titled album, Peter Chris with his self-titled album, Gene Simmons with his self-titled album, and Paul Stanley with his self-titled album. Meanwhile, also on that same day, Daryl Hall and John Oates released Along the Red Ledge. In 1981, Genesis released Abacab. In 1982, Twisted Sister released Under the Blade. In 1983, Dawkins released Breaking the Chains. Kiss released Lick It Up. In 1985, The Replacements released Tim. In 1986, Glass Tiger released The Thin Red Line. In 1987, Kiss released Crazy Nights. And if you're under the impression that Kiss loved releasing albums on this date, you would be correct. In 1989, Janet Jackson released Rhythm Nation 1814, and the band released To Kingdom Come, the Definitive Collection. 
In 1990, Derek and the Dominoes released the Layla Sessions 20th Anniversary Edition. In 1992, the Easy Beats released the Definitive Series. In 1997, At the Drive-In released El Gran Orgo. In 1998, the Fantastic Plastic Machine released Luxury. In 2001, Tori Amos released Strange Little Girls. Also on that same day, Alice Cooper released Dragon Town, The Knack released Premium Gold Collection, and Fish released five live albums. They released Live Fish Volume 1, Live Fish Volume 2, Live Fish Volume 3, Live Fish Volume 4, and Live Fish Volume 5. In 2006, Free released Chronicles. In 2006, same day, Billy Idol released Original Sound, and The Stranglers released Sweet 16. In Roman numerals, no less. In 2007, Pearl Jam released Pearl Jam Live at Lollapalooza 2007. In 2009, Madonna released Celebration. In 2012, Driving and Crying released Songs About Cars, Space, and the Ramones. And Paul Simon released Live in New York City. And in 2015, David Gilmore released Rattle That Lock. Singles that were released in the UK on September 18th include in 1971, The Hollies released Gasoline Alley Bread. Meanwhile in America, in 1964, The Shangri-Las released Leader of the Pack. In 1967, The Who released I Can See for Miles. In 1979, Chic released My Forbidden Lover and The Eagles released Heartache Tonight. In 1982, Pat Benatar released Shadows of the Night. In 1983, KISS released the single Lick It Up to go with their album Lick It Up. In 1993, Asa Bass released All That She Wants. In 1993, same day, John Mellencamp, then known as John Cougar Mellencamp, released Human Wheels. In 2000, the Foo Fighters released Breakout. In 2013, Pearl Jam released Sirens. And in 2017, BTS released Pied Piper. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on September 18th include Dee Dee Ramone of the Ramones, Rapper Exhibit, Rapper Capadonna, Ricky Bell of Belle Biv DeVoe, and also New Edition, Spike Spice of the group Breathe, Joanne Catherall of The Human League, singer Frankie Avalon, Keith Morris of Black Flag, and also the group Circle Jerks, Carrie Livgren of Kansas, Bam King of Ace, singer Joji, singer Lucas Forchhammer, rapper L.A. Capone, singer Brooke Addy, rapper Amber Liu of the group FX, singer Megan Lee, country music singer Taylor Dye, singer Tawanda Braxton, jazz singer Teddy King, Classical composer Francesca Cassini, singer Jimmy Rogers, gospel music singer Bobby Jones, singer P.F. Sloan, jazz guitarist Emily Remier, John Mann of Spirit of the West, music photographer Dave Garr, singer songwriter and guitarist Alani Lee, drummer Martin Beadle of the group The Cutting Crew. Richard Walmsley of the group The Beatmasters, bassist Nigel Clark of Dodgy, and composer Sam M. Stepped. Artists who unfortunately passed away on September 18th include composer Peter Hansel, who passed away in 1831 at the age of 60. Composer Carol Kurpinski passed away in 1857 at the age of 72. Composer Ernest Farrar passed away in 1918 at the age of 33. Gospel and blues singer Blind Willie Johnson passed away from syphilis in 1945 at the age of 48. Composer Fernand Lamy passed away in 1966 at the age of 85. The greatest guitarist known to mankind, at least in my opinion and a whole bunch of other people's, 
Mr. Jimi Hendrix of, of course, Jimi Hendrix and the Band of Gypsies and Jimi Hendrix Experience passed away from asphyxiation in 1970 at the age of 27. We discuss more about his death, among other items, on this week's Music History In-Depth podcast, which has already dropped by the time you're hearing this particular podcast. It's on this network, by the way. Please like, subscribe, and do all those other algorithm thingies. Greg Arama of the Amboy Dukes passed away in a motorcycle accident in 1979 at the age of 29. Oh, by the way, I've almost forgot. Jimi Hendrix, when he died, it was in 1970 at the age of 27, joining the 27 Club. There you go, just in case I forgot. In any event, saxophonist Dick Stabel passed away in 1980 at the age of 71. Composer Charles Paul passed away in 1990 at the age of 88. Earl Van Dyke of the Motown house band The Funk Brothers from 1964 to 1972 passed away from cancer in 1992 at the age of 62. Pianist Vera Lawrence of the CBS Symphony Orchestra passed away in 1996 at the age of 87. Blues singer Jimmy Witherspoon passed away in 1997 at the age of 77. Bassist Pepsi Tate of the group Tiger Tales passed away from cancer in 2007 at the age of 42. The conductor of the East Berlin Symphony from 1960 to 1977, Kurt Sanderling passed away in 2011 at the age of 98. The opera singer for the Berlin State Opera from 1951 to 1985, Lisa Otto, passed away in 2013 at the age of 93. Elton John's drummer, Roger Pope, passed away from cancer in 2013 at the age of 66. Trumpet player Kenny Wheeler passed away in 2014 at the age of 84. And singer Mendoza passed away from cancer in 2016 at the age of 38. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is September 19th, when in 1986, Disney Epcot opened Michael Jackson's new 3D show, Captain EO. Captain EO. 